Hello, my Yarny friends. I'm Sarah Satch, and welcome or welcome back to my crochet channel. Today's video is a fun and silly mushroom hat. Now, this hat will fit anywhere from a 22 to 24 inch head. It's very stretchy and it works up super fast because we're using a bulky number six yarn. But don't panic if you don't have a bulky number six yarn and you want to make this hat. You can use two strands of a bulky five or three strands of a medium weight number four yarn and it will stitch up just fine. Use the same size crochet hook though. All right, now I love this hat and every year around Halloween I like to make just a fun and silly hat. And I was outside watching my granddaughter flip around the yard because, you know, she's in gymnastics. And I asked her, I said, what kind of hat should Oma make this year? And she said, look at all those mushrooms in the back of the yard. You should make a mushroom hat. Ha, 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 ha. So I did. <laughs> it's super silly and super fun. And I just love it. You can add as many spots as you want to it. I just added those four sort of randomly. And I just love them. And it's super cute, super fun, super duper easy to make. And the thing is, it whips up super fast because we're using a bulky yarn or holding several strands together. So there's lots of possibilities with this. And you don't have to make it red and white like I did. You can do different colored spots. You could make it pink and yellow, whatever colors that you want. I like to have some sort of silly hat on when I'm answering the door for trick-or-treaters. And I'm really excited about it because in Parker, we, in, we lived in Colorado, we never really got trick-or-treaters. We sure did last year, and I'm sure hoping that we do this year also. And I want to wear this hat. I think it would be super fun for the trick-or-treaters to see a silly person like me wearing a mushroom hat. <laughs> now, you can find all the information <clears throat> all the pictures, all the notes on my blog. And as always, I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. So what do we need to make our super cute mushroom hat? Well, we're stitching today with bulky number six yarns. Super bulky number six yarns. I'm using Yarn B by True Colors, which is a Hobby Lobby yarn. And I just have it in red and white. And that's why I have my sort of goldy beige mat down here so that you can see what I'm doing with the white yarn. Now I chose to go with the super bulky six because I wanted it to stitch up fast. It's super cute and it makes a great last minute costume for Halloween. Or if you just want to make the beret style hat, it makes a super cute beret style hat. We're making the beret style hat in the white, and then we're making all the spots in red. But of course, you can do them in any colors that you want. And also, even though I'm using a super bulky number six acrylic yarn, if you don't have a super bulky six, you can use two strands of bulky five or three strands of medium weight number four. So there's lots of options there for you for yarn. Okay, so let me repeat that. I'm using super bulky six. If you don't have super bulky six, you can use two strands of bulky number five yarn or three strands of medium weight number four yarn for this project. We're going to be stitching up both the hat and the polka dots or spots <laughs> with a nine millimeter crochet hook. This is one I just added a polymer clay into just to make it a little easier to hold. It's not my favorite, but it's my end hook. <laughs> You'll also need a needle to weave in your ends and to sew on your spots. And then of course you need a pair of scissors. We'll be starting at the top of our hat and then working our way down. All right, so I've got my white yarn here. And of course, you can make your hat in any colors that you want to. All right, so we're going to start with our slip knot. And we're going to chain five. One, two, three, 
four and five. We'll join that into a circle, put the tail of yarn over your hook and put it through that loop and then we'll make that stay knot. If you prefer to use the magic circle or another method for your beginning circle, you certainly can. All right, so we're gonna go in that circle, pull up a loop and chain three. And now we're going to stitch nine double crochets in our circle. The chain three counts as one and we're stitching nine more for a total of 10. You'll also notice that I'm stitching over that tail of yarn. That way I can close up that hole in the top of my hat. We don't want a hole in the top of our hat. And you'll notice as we stitch this up, it's gonna go really fast using this super chunky yarn. All right, let's see how many I've stitched. Here's my chain three, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. There we go. Pull that string out a little bit. I'm going to join to that chain three <clears throat> with a slip stitch and chain three. And before I go any farther, I'm gonna turn it over. I'm gonna pull on that yarn. I'm going to grab my needle. There we go. And we're just gonna weave that in securely. When you're using some of these bigger needles, and I did grab the straight one, I had the crooked one out earlier. You need to make sure you're going through fibers of the yarn and it might be a little more difficult because the bigger needles are a little more blunt on the end, but do it because you do not want to have a hole in the top of your hat. All right, so I'm just going to go right back the way I came. Whoops. Let's do that again. There we go. Nice tug on there and clip that off. All right, so for round one, we have 10 double crochets. We joined our chain three and chained three, and then we closed up that hole in the center. For round two, our chain three counts as our first double crochet, and then we're going to double crochet in that same stitch as our chain three and then we're going to place two double crochets in each of those double crochets around. And you can already see how quickly this hat is going to stitch up. And that's why I said it makes a great last minute costume. I always like to wear a silly hat when I'm answering the door. We didn't have trick-or-treaters for a long time in Parker Last year, our first year here in Oklahoma, I had a gazillion. I almost ran out of candy, but my wonderful son-in-law had Target deliver some. <laughs> so I had more than enough. I'll make sure I have plenty this year. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm stitching two double crochets in each of those double crochets around. And then we'll join back to our chain three. I stitched two double crochets in each of the stitches around, so I have 20 double crochet for round two. We're going to again join to the chain three with a slip stitch and again chain three. One, two, and three. All right, now for round three, we're basically just going to repeat what we did on round two. We're going to stitch a double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three, and then two double crochets in each of those double crochets around. And this is going to give us a nice flat top to our beret style mushroom hat. Because you know they have that sort of flat look on the top. And once we put it on our head, it's gonna push up a little bit, 
It'll look just like a mushroom. <laughs> All righty, so for round three, we're stitching two double crochets in each of our double crochets around. Then we'll join back to our chain three. I have completed round three, two double crochets in each of our double crochets around. So I now have 40 double crochets and you can see how flat that lays. All right, so we're going to join to our chain three with a slip stitch and again, chain three. Now our chain three counts as our first double crochet on all of our double crochet rows. On this row, row four or round four, we're not going to do two in each one. We're going to double crochet in the next two. One and two. And because our chain three counts as one, that gives us three double crochets. Then in the next double crochet, we're going to double crochet two times one and two. And so our repeat for round three is one double crochet in the next three. One, two, three, and then two double crochets in the next. One and two. I call that doing three and two. It's not a technical term. Again, it just helps me remember what I'm supposed to be doing on this row. All right, so we're going to double crochet in the next three. One, two, three, and two double crochets in the next double crochet. That's our repeat for round four. One, two, three, and two. And we'll do this working all the way around and join back to our chain three. I have completed our fourth row, one, two, three, four. And we have 50 double crochets. We stitched three and two. We're going to join to our chain three and again, chain three. All right, now what we're going to do for row five is we're going to double crochet in the next three stitches. All right, so we double crocheted in the next three and we have our chain three counts as one. So we have one, two, three, four double crochets and then two double crochets in the next. And that's our repeat for round or row five. One double crochet in the next four and two double crochets in the next. Because remember that chain three counted as our first double crochet. So we stitch two double crochets in the same stitch, one double crochet in the next four, and then two double crochets in the same stitch. and one double crochet in the next four. One, two, three, and four. And then two double crochets in that next double crochet stitch. So we're doing four and two. And we're going to repeat this again, working all the way around and again, join to our chain three. I have completed round five. On round five, we have 60 double crochets. 
were not going to increase anymore. All right. So I joined to my chain three and I chained three. We joined with that slip stitch. All right. And so what we're going to do for round six is we're just going to place one double crochet in each of the double crochets around. No more increases. One double crochet in each of the double crochets working all the way around. And then again, we'll join back to our chain three. I have completed round six. You're going to have 60 double crochets again because we didn't add or subtract any stitches. All right, and so what you're going to do is you're going to repeat row six or round six for two more rows. And you'll start to notice that it's going to begin to curl in just a little bit. And that's exactly what we want it to do. So we're going to repeat row six or round six for two more rows. So I have repeated round six two more times. That brings us up to row eight. And in eight rows, look how much of the hat we've already created. That's why I love using this super bulky yarn to make a fun and quick Halloween hat. But also, you can wear this anytime. So now we're going to begin decreasing to bring the hat down even more. All right, so our chain three counts as one, and we're going to double crochet in the next three double crochets. Now with the next two double crochets, we're going to stitch two double crochets together or a double crochet decrease stitch. So you'll yarn over, go in the next double crochet and pull up a loop. Then you'll go in the next double crochet and pull up a loop. You'll have four loops on your hook instead of three. So we'll yarn over and go through the first three, yarn over and go through the last two. So we've decreased by one stitch. And so our repeat for this row is one double crochet in the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. And then double crochet decrease with the next two stitches, stitching them together. So one double crochet in the next four, one, two, <laughs> three, and four, and then two double crochets together. And it's gonna pull that hat in even more and We'll repeat this working all the way around and join back to our chain three. One double crochet in the next four and double crochet decrease or stitching two double crochets in the next and repeat around. I have completed that first row of decreases. We stitched one double crochet in the next four and then stitched the next two together. So we decrease down to 50 stitches. All right, so now we're going to do another row of decrease stitches. So we're going to double crochet in the next two. Our chain three counts as one. And then we're going to double crochet in the next two. And then stitch a double crochet decrease or two double crochets together. One double crochet in the next three. One, two, and three. And then stitch the next two double crochets together for a double crochet decrease. 
and we'll repeat this working all the way around our hat for one more row of decreases. All right, one double crochet in the next three, double crochet decrease or stitching two double crochets together in the next stitch all the way around and then again, join back to our chain three. I have completed round or row 10 we have 40 double crochets. I joined to my chain three, but I did not chain three because we are going to change colors. We're going to bring in our color two for the trim of our mushroom. All right, so we're gonna bring that red in or whatever color that you would like to have for the trim of your hat. All right, so we're gonna chain one that chain one just gets us up on top so we know where we can stitch. And we're gonna start right in that first stitch and stitch a single crochet. All right, so now we're going to just stitch one single crochet in each of our double crochets around. Now I'm using red for my polka dots or my spots, and so I'm using red for my trim but you can make your dots all different colors and you can make your trim whatever colors that you would like. All right, so I'm single crocheting in each of my double crochets working all the way around and then I'll join back to my first single crochet. I stitched a single crochet in each of those double crochets around I'm going to join to that first single crochet with a slip stitch and chain one. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to repeat this for two more rows. So we're going to go right in that first single crochet and stitch a single crochet. And we'll stitch a single crochet in each of the stitches around. And we'll do this for two more rows. And that will give us three rows of our trim in red or whatever color you've chosen to do. So we're going to repeat row 11 for two more rows. I have completed those two additional rows of single crochets. So we have three rows of single crochets for the trim on our mushroom hat. I join to my first single crochet and I'm going to cut my yarn. All right, we're going to put our hook in that next loop. There we go. We're going to grab that loop and pull it to the inside of the hat so we have just a little bit neater of an appearance on the front. All right, and then I'm going to take my needle and weave in my ends. I've got the white one and the red one where I changed, and then this red one. It can be a little bit more challenging when you're using a super duper chunky yarn. But the key is to go in the stitches and if you can go through some of the fibers of the stitch, it will stay more securely. And go one way, then go back the way you came and kind of go through those same stitches. It'll give you a much neater appearance and a sturdier weave-in. All right. All right, so now I need to do these other two, and then I'm gonna show you how to make those spots. Going to need four or more or less, depending on how many polka dots or spots you want on your mushroom hat. I'm putting four on mine, and this is the spot itself. It's a little bit tricky to film with red, and plus this has a sheen to it, so it kind of messes with the camera a little bit. And so what we're gonna do is I'm going to make one of the spots with this blue yarn so that you can see it and then also the red one on the hat so you can see how to do that. All right, so we're gonna take our yarn and make our slip knot and we're going to chain two chains. Now in the second chain from the hook, we're going to stitch six single crochets. One, 
two, three, four, five, and six. Now we're going to be stitching in the round, so you're gonna to wanna to grab a stitch marker. That means we're not going to do any joining. All right, so I'm going to mark that last stitch. So I've marked my last stitch on round one with my stitch marker. On row two, we're going to place two single crochets in each of those six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll take our stitch marker out. Eleven and twelve single crochet stitches for round two. And then we'll put that stitch marker right back in. All right, so now what we're going to do for round three is stitch one single crochet in the next two, and then two single crochets in the next, one and two. One single crochet in the next two, and two single crochets in the next, one and two. One single crochet in the next two, and two in the next, one and two. <clears throat> one single crochet in the next two. That brings us to our last single crochet on that round, and we'll stitch two single crochets in that stitch. So that's going to give us 16 single crochets for round three. And then we wanna make sure we put that stitch marker right back in. All right, let's do round four. We're going to place one single crochet in the next three. One, two, three, and two in the next. One and two. And then we'll repeat this around. One single crochet in the next three. And two in the next. One and two. And then we'll just repeat that around till we reach that stitch marker. So I did one in the next three and two in the next all the way around for round four, moved my stitch marker, and now we just have one more row and we're going to stitch one single crochet in the next four. One, two, three, four, and two in the next, one and two. And again, we'll just repeat this around till we reach that stitch marker. One single crochet in the next four, and two in the next, and repeat around. I have completed round five, stitching one single crochet in the next four and two in the last, and repeat around. And now here's where my stitch marker is on my last stitch. We're going to slip stitch in that next stitch. And then you need to cut your yarn, leaving about a 12 to 16 inch tail, because we're gonna use that to sew it onto the hat. All right, so I'm gonna go in that next loop and pull that loop to the back and tie off to the back. All right, and then we can take that stitch marker out and it looks a lot neater when we when we go to the back. Just makes a much nicer appearance around. Now you may notice it may look a little bit like a square. It's okay because we'll just uh, work it out so that it does look like a circle when we sew it on. Now before we do that, we wanna deal with this. And we wanna make sure that we have a little bit of a tail here. We're going to close this hole up, but we're not going to cut it off because we're going to use this tail 
to help us attach it to the hat, okay? So all we're going to do is we're going to go around these stitches and close up that hole. All right, and then we'll just kind of come up and just go back the way we came and leave that attached. And I'll show you why when I show you how to sew on the red spot, which I'm going to do right now. So here is my actual hat. I've already sewn three of them on. I just sort of stuck them on randomly. And so I'm gonna put this one on the back side. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to thread on that center one first. And we're gonna use this as a stay stitch, okay? And so you want to find out exactly where you want to put it. And I'll just kind of hold that. And then I'm going to take this here and I'm going to go through a couple of stitches to the inside of the hat. All right. And then I'll just loop it through a couple of stitches. And that's going to help that spot stay where I want it to be when I'm trying to sew it on. And then we'll use that when we finish up. All right. So now that's in place and I can begin sewing it on with my long tail of yarn that I saved for the outside edge. Now, if you're more comfortable adding some straight pins or needles or whatever to hold it in place, you can. I just hold it with my hand like this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around these stitches. So we're gonna go in and come up in those stitches around the edge, okay? And I like to just go in and up and just go in and out. And sometimes I'll do this a couple of times around, depending on, you know, how secure I want it to sit. But their initial time around is basically putting it where you want it. And then you can thread your needle again and uh, make sure it's on there securely. And it is a little more challenging using a blunt needle with a thicker yarn. So just take your time the truth of the matter is the hat's gonna stitch up super quick. The spots are gonna stitch up super quick. What's gonna take you more time is sewing those spots on. I think it would look really cute with a whole bunch of different colored spots like yellow and blue, purple and pink. I'm gonna go back on that one. I think that one needs a little bit better hold there. Alrighty, so now I'm back around where I started and I'm just going to keep going until my, my yarn runs out and then I'm going to add some more yarn and just make sure that I've stitched it securely. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go inside and then I'll bring this down to here, kind of going through just the back of those stitches to where I started with that first thread. All right, and then I'm just going to make a knot. I know in yarn and working with that stuff, you're not supposed to make knots, but I do when I'm sewing on pieces. Okay, and then now I'll just take another piece of yarn, I'll clip it, and I'll thread it on, and I'll go back around that to make sure that's going to hold securely.